environment that Sheikh Abdullah Azam rose to prominence. Born in Palestine, Azam fought against Israel and against Arab regimes he believed were puppets of the West. In the early 1980s, Azam went to Peshawar, Pakistan to set up a support network for the Holy Warriors. The American headquarters was called the al kifah Refugee Center, but when translated, the Arabic on their own letterhead reads, the Office of Services to the Holy Warriors. It provided money, weapons, and most important, recruited thousands of Muslim fighters from outside Afghanistan. Azam helped transform the war against the Soviets into a full-blown international jihad, or holy war. Now, the enemy was no longer just the communists, but Jews, Christians, and moderate Muslims, who they accused of being part of a conspiracy to defeat Islam. The world today is arbitrarily ruled by Jews and Christians. The Americans, the British, and others. And behind them, the fingers of international jury with their wealth and their women and their media. At the same time, Pakistan was funneling more and more of the CIA's money to the most radical Afghan Muslims. In the end, they would contribute to the expansion of jihad around the world. We sought to maintain a balance and never allow it to get uh, too far in favor of the fundamentals. We had really very few illusions. Uh, that is, uh, that's not to say that we could have predicted that some of these uh, mujahideen uh, uh, might have turned against uh, the U.S. or the West later on. But as I say, uh, our focus was on uh, hitting and hurting uh, as much as possible the Soviet forces in Afghanistan. I don't think we have really anything to be uh, apologetic about. These were the, the fighting assets and we had to aid them. What came later, came later. The Mujahideen had succeeded in driving out a superpower. It showed men like Abdullah Azam that they could now defeat any enemy of Allah, no matter how powerful. Oh brothers, after Afghanistan, nothing in the world is impossible for us anymore. There are no superpowers or many powers. What matters is the willpower that springs from our religious belief. Jihad battlefronts expanded throughout the Middle East. Islamic holy warriors began launching terror attacks against Israel, Egypt, and Algeria. The terrorists portrayed themselves as freedom fighters, and many in the West fell for this. They thought, well, they're just freedom fighters. We're for freedom, and we're for fighting for freedom, and why not just accept them for what they are, whereas they were in fact terrorists. So it's not a new problem that terrorists will hide behind definitions. Paul Bremer was ambassador at large for counterterrorism for the State Department in the 1980s. I always felt when I was involved in the counterterrorism efforts that it was important to make a distinction. We were not anti-Islamic. The vast majority of Islamic people, the vast majority of Arab people are peace-loving, peacekeeping people like most Americans. Terrorists in every society are a very small minority of corrupt, criminal, violent people, many with a political agenda, who should be singled out for specific attention. But they, it should never be that we say in anything that gives the impression that we think the fight against terrorism is a fight against Islam or a fight against the Arabs. Ironically, anti-Western militants soon found that the United States was the best place to raise funds, disseminate propaganda, and build up their political organizations. Coming to the United States gives them a platform that they can use for the rest of the world. They can produce their films, their videos, their publications, they can collect money, and they can use it to support their movement. And Oliver buck was one of the FBI's top counterterrorism agents. Many, many acts of, of terrorism have been carried out in the name of religion, so certainly this extremist element of Islam is not unique. What is unique is the international nature, the connection all the way 
from uh, North America, Europe, the Middle East, Pakistan, Afghanistan, over into Southeast Asia. Uh, it is much more global than any type of terrorist network that we've had to deal with in the past. From the Al-Kifak Refugee Center in Brooklyn, Abdullah Azam and others would go around the country raising money and preaching holy war. There is no turning back from the stone to the pistol, to the Uzi, to the cannon, to the RPG, and then you can expect Allah's ultimate victory. The al Kifak Refugee Center set up an elaborate support and recruiting network coast to coast with branches in more than 38 American cities. These centers became clearinghouses and recruiting offices to support jihad around the world. It was Azam's top aide, a Palestinian sheikh named Tamim al-Adnani, who did some of the most vigorous fundraising. He is seen here appealing for funds in Lawrence, Kansas in 1988. So one of our goals here is to collect money for the donations as much as we can. And alhamdulillah today, as our brothers uh, noticed, we have got from Colombia the greatest jump so far. Before Colombia, we had 9,500 from a place called Corvallis, a town called Corvallis in uh, Oregon, very near to Portland. Now, today, we have got much more. We have got about $15,256 plus about $4,500 gold. gold. So about $20,000 from the town of Colombia. And this is the piece now. It's the but it wasn't just money he was interested in. Adnani was actively recruiting fighters to take part in the jihad. The only politics we understand is fast, fast, fast. This is the best point. Shooting, we saw, we said, our, as our Sayyaf said, نَحْنُ نَحِلُّ قَضِيَّتَنَا فِي الْخَنَادِقْ لَا فِي الْفَنَادِقْ We solve our problems in the trenches, not in the water. Our problems are solved in the trenches, fighting, not in the hotels, around the table. But Adnani was not just referring to the trenches in Afghanistan. His vision of jihad was a worldwide liberation movement waged in the name of Allah. Listen to him here as he explains to his followers the scope of the holy war. The best thing is continue jihad, nothing but jihad. Even after liberation of Afghanistan, Allah, the leaders have agreed in front of me to continue jihad to Sabiria, even after liberation of Afghanistan. Even after the Islamic government, they will not stop. They will go up to the Muslim countries of Russia, Islamic Republic. They will go down to Palestine, to Al-Quds. They all promised Allah to liberate Palestine. Anybody stops in their way, oh my God, I will sit over him myself. Smash! <laughs> Any ruler, he will not let us go, we will go by force. Jihad, you know what is jihad? Allah Akbar. And then imagine the Afghanis who gave very hard time to Russia, the Soviets. What will they do with the Israelis? They will eat them. Afghanis are very crazy people. They are very brave. I have never seen like this. Wallahi, 100, all of them. Allah Akbar and they run. Machine gun, bombs, they nothing stop them, Allah. Nothing. When they want to die, Shahada, they want Shahada. Allah Akbar and they come. But the militant's rage was not limited to their enemies in the Middle East. Increasingly, the Islamic holy warriors focused their anger on the West especially America.